Good day everyone, how's it going? Coming from the studio today and I've just got a lens that I want to show you guys. Great for the EOS R. It is the Sigma 18-35 f1.8. And I picked one up because we actually picked up a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K. Uh, so basically this is a APS-C type lens. So a lens that works on crop um, APS-C crop body cameras. And the Super 35 millimeter uh, equivalent, you know, it's almost Super 35 in the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. Uh, and the EF mount means that this will go perfectly with that. But I wanted to show how good this is as well for the Canon EOS R because when we shoot in 4K in the Canon EOS R, we've got a 1.7 crop factor. So this 18 to 35 becomes equivalent to about 30 to 60. Um, millimeter focal length and so I wanted to take you guys through it and show you what that's like and why that's good for 4k on the Canon EOS R it kind of takes care of the crop and um, yeah if you know anything about the Sigma lens it's very very sharp so it's a super super nice lens it's kind of like a sharp as sharp as some of the cine lenses out there so it's perfect for um, yeah that kind of sharp sort of nice um, yeah, nice focal length as well. Nice bokeh because it's got the 1.8 aperture as well. So I'm just gonna show you the lens. And I picked this up off um, Gumtree, which is like a Craigslist here in Australia, and picked it up for 700 Aussie dollars. The lens runs about a thousand Aussie dollars, maybe about 650 US dollars. So it's quite affordable for the quality of this lens. And um, I know there's a bunch of reviews online about it, but I just want to talk about it, you know, because you guys might have jumped across to the EOS R from 5D Mark IV. Even if you're on the 5D Mark IV, still uh, having this lens in your kit is going to be really good for shooting 4K on the 5D Mark IV. The EOS R's got a setting. I'll just show you that quickly now as well on the camera where you can actually just change it to crop mode so it stays in that windowed mode. So then whenever you're running with this lens on the camera, it's always gonna be shooting, even HD, it will shoot in that crop mode. So it's gonna be like as if it's an APS-C camera. So I think that's great because then when you go to 4K, obviously you're using the full 4K of the sensor, um, but, well, sorry, the full crop of the sensor, but then when you're in HD, you're also cropping down for the HD as well, so. This is uh, basically an 18 to 35. Let's see if I can get some focus there for you. Yeah, 18 to 35, nice and smooth. And focus is really nice as well. It's quite short the throw, so really good for a focus, uh, follow focus, or for even pulling focus manually. It's great for that. And uh, as I said, a super sharp image out of this lens. So I find that I'm shooting now in the 24, uh, f1.4 from Canon, the L series two lens. And I find that sometimes I have to sharpen this lens a little bit, even though it is a super sharp lens. But with the uh, Sigma Art, I did a, a project where I shot on red and we shot with the Sigma Art for all the close up and detail shots. I didn't even have to sharpen this lens. It was absolutely awesome. And that's the reason why I kind of bought it because after that I was like, this is kind of, it feels like a Cine Prime. It looks like a Cine Prime and didn't even have to sharpen. Uh, the footage that came from this lens. So let me chuck it on the camera and I'll show you the equivalent focal length that it runs in 4K on the EOS R. So I'll switch it out and see you soon. So right now, uh, this is a little bit, uh, <laughs> hello, a little bit intimidating, uh, but right now it's at 35 uh, millimeters and f1.8 uh, on the Sigma lens right now. And what I've done is I've just got it in HD. So just shooting again, same 25 frames per second in HD. So you can see that this lens will run as a 35 millimeter f1.8 on the EOS R. So in normal, uh, non-cropped mode. And it looks pretty awesome. Like it's sharp, uh, the autofocus is really good, really uh, really fast. And it's got a quite, a, this is a little bit awkward, but got quite a close focusing distance as well. So it's um, point, it says on the camera, is 0.28, 0 0.28 millimeters. And so that's really close. And that means you can kind of use it as a macro-ish type lens as well, super sharp getting macro sort of type shots with 35 with this setup right now 
that I'm running here. So let me just show you what happens because we're on a full frame, right? And we're using APC. Let me show you what happens if I just zoom this out now. And basically we're introducing a terrible vignette. So now I'm at 18 millimeters, but you can see it's unusable. There's a vignette that's happening, that's taking off the shine, but you could probably use it um, to about, if you wanted like a creative thing, you could probably use it to about here, which is, um, yeah, around about 28 millimeters. So if you're adding some vignette, you could probably use it 28 millimeters successfully and add some vignette or add some, you know, dark in the background, blur out the background. Um, so that can be um, something that can help as well. And you probably hear my son screaming in the background at the moment too, because my wife's on the phone at the moment. So don't ignore that. That's just normal around here. Anyway, so I'm going to now chuck this camera into the 4K mode and the crop mode. I'll show you on screen as well how to do that. And then let's have a look at what it looks like in 4K crop mode. Okay, so here we are in 4K crop mode and the camera is set to 18 millimeters. So, you know, this is quite a cool framing for vloggers and equivalent now to about 30 millimeter focal length. So if I was holding the camera with my arm out like this, you know, this could be a good vlogging camera for 4K and looks really good. And um, yeah, as I say, really nice and sharp. You can see that the background is less blurred out than when we were in the 1920 by 1080 full HD at 35. So there's less of a bokeh, there's less of a blur out of the back, but it's still a super sharp lens. And so you're still getting that really good look from this lens. So now let me zoom it in, which will be a little bit awkward, but let me zoom it into 24 millimeters. So this is at 24 millimeters and I'll just lock focus on there. So focus is locked on. So this is now the lens at 24 millimeters, which is at about 45 millimeter equivalent length. And then let's go all the way to 35. So now we're at 35 and this is kind of what it looks like with at 35. Now 35 is uh, equivalent to about 60 millimeters. So this is kind of what you're getting with this lens on the 4K. And I think it's a really good focal length for interviews. I think it's a great focal length for, you know, but so we're talking about 30 to um, 30 to 60 uh, millimeter focal length. And I do interviews with a 50 mil lens on a full frame. So with this crop down for the 4K, it's really good because you get that range from 30 all the way up to 60. So you can frame up an interview quite well, do some close up stuff, uh, you know, maybe do your second angle, which is more close up and more cinematic as well. And you get that sharp lens as well. But anyway, this is quite awkward. So let's go back to the 18 focal length. And I think, who is this lens for? I think maybe, you know, a vlogger could really get by with this lens pretty easily for most of what they do. Also, someone who's doing a lot of handheld and stuff. Now, it doesn't have uh, image stabilization, but the IBIS inside the camera, the digital image stabilization, uh, not the sensor stabilization, inside the EOS R is actually pretty good. If you're quite steady with your hands, then it actually does well. What you will notice with this lens, because it's so sharp, is you will notice micro jitter and stuff like that. So it is something to probably be used on gimbals. And it's a nice, you know, light lens and it doesn't extend the focus throw as well. So it's good probably for gimbal work as well. So I think that was all I wanted to kind of show you guys on the lens. And obviously I've shown you the mode of the camera to set it up. So if I'm in that crop mode on the camera, let me just set that up actually. And I'll come quickly back to this so I can show you that before we finish this video. Okay, so now I've got movie cropping enabled. I'm shooting now in 4K. I'm gonna jump quickly across to 1080p and I'll show you what happens. So just bear with me as I do that. So now I'm shooting in 1080p with the crop mode on. So as you can see, it doesn't jump to the wide framing. I'll jump back now to the full HD without the crop and I'll show you the difference between the two and the bokeh. Okay, so this is now back to full HD without the crop. So you can see the backdrop grounds like behind me here is a little bit more crushed out than would otherwise be in the other setting. Uh, but it still looks really good in both. I'll just switch back quickly and you can see how it looks both. I'm actually at uh, 28 focal length here as well. So now I'm gonna jump back and drop to 18 focal length to get the equivalent uh, framing and you'll see the difference there. Okay, so now this is back to the cropped full HD framing. So you can see that there's less bokeh, a uh, little bit less, it looks a little bit more clinical. So maybe I would shoot a vlog, you know, without the crop on 
and just have the camera at, you know, 28-ish, 28 to 35, just to get that nice compression, a bit nicer compression. But then everything else, I'd probably shoot in crop mode uh, on the EOS app. So hopefully that helps you guys. Uh, I'll put links description below on this lens and, you know, check it out on Amazon because, you know, sometimes they've got deals and sales on this lens as well. You might be able to pick it up for like, at 600 US dollars for my Aussie subscribers, you might be able to get it for, you know, around about 850 uh, from different uh, outlets in Australia. But check it out via Amazon and thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subbed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell if you do get value from my vids and you know, that'll just tell you when they're coming out uh, and it'll give you a notification when they're coming out and you can just watch them straight away. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Yo, check.